next up we have Karen Pickering, who is a local Twin Cities favorite performer. She's the co-host of a show, Day Drinking with Mom, that's at the House of Comedy. Uh, let's give Karen a really warm welcome and get her up here on stage. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Oh, here you go. You have everything you need? This is perfect. Can I walk around? You absolutely can walk around. Yeah. You want a table? Okay, a little table would be awesome. That is perfect. Thanks, you guys, for coming out. Hi, that's better. All right, thank you guys so much for coming out. It's Sunday afternoon. I love this time frame to do comedy, especially in the spring, because we're insane in Minnesota. We're insane. We are totally excited to be out. We're like, there's still snow around my house, like three feet of snow, but there's a path. And I wore shorts yesterday, so it was great. Anyways, you'll pick up a little accent. I'm from Boston. I, it's still around. And you guys have been very nice to put up with me for a couple decades. Yeah. And now I'm stuck in Minnesota because I married one of you native Minnesotans. Yeah. I married one of you native Minnesotans. And the double whammy is he's a Lutheran. You guys never leave except for fish. You never leave. And it's kind of interesting right now because, well, he's eight years younger than me, you know? And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like faster than he is. I'm doing, I'm like not gonna die. I wanna keep going. I got today, baby, let's change it up. Let's shake it up. I'm from the East Coast, let's deal with it. Well, many native Minnesotans changed over COVID and became decisive and fast, screaming, maniac drivers. Just like the people on the East Coast, my Lutheran remains a little milk toast. <laughs> Still can't decide what to do. Example, he is the person at the bottom of the ramp on Highway 100 in St. Louis Park, going to visit his mom at the nursing home. Been there eight years, looks left, looks right, still can't get on the highway. Last week, I got out of the car excuse me, out of the car and walked up the hill to go to see his mother and had a visit by the time he decided to merge. <laughs> yeah. So you know it's an issue in the marriage, you know? You know, if I say, let's have a little amore tonight, um, and maybe two weeks. I've never heard a man say that, but you know, that's kind of a new approach. That's, a little, that's as dirty as I get, you guys, okay? That's as, you can handle it. I know you can, Minnesota. I know you can. So anyways, I want to say something because every time I do a show, I feel it now. I felt it since 2015, 2016, and beyond. And, and it's that when, I, when my name gets said, there's a little bit of a flinch in the audience. <laughs> Karen, Karen, Karen. Yeah, yeah. That woman in the BMW, the wedge haircut, the fur coat diagonally parked <laughs> in a handicap spot that goes into the restaurant. At some point, she asked to speak to the manager. Yeah, she's made my life a living hell. Why couldn't her name have been Ashley? Those women are usually a little bit bitchy. They are. I have a niece. She's bitchy. She gets it done, but it's an Ashley. But the double whammy for me here is I have this East Coast voice that comes out, and, I, and you know, my vocal tone is not late night radio. <laughs> my vocal tone is I want to get it done right now. Let's do the laundry. Let's get the crap done. Let's get out. Let's live. You know, you, Minnesotans can be afraid of that. Yeah. It's okay. You're getting better. You're getting better, and that's why I stay. I'm so hopeful for you. I really am. Um, so the name Karen, you know, it's actually become an, ac an action verb, meaning to be talked to death, to be whined to death, to be bi, you know, to death. So that's um, and it's tough because I just applied for a new position within my company. I have a couple of gigs going, but during the day I sell shoes. Yeah, okay. And you're gonna want to know why I'm in retail because I love yous. I love customer service. I love to give it back, you know? 
I'm kind of old school. I just think that we should keep stores. But anyways, the reason I'm there is it's this place, this company owns nine stores in the Twin City, old-fashioned customer service, great Benny's. But here's the thing. Look at my hooves, people. Ooh, if I lean on this table. Look at the hooves. Size 10 double E on a 5'7 frame. I weigh 135 pounds. A lot of weight in my feet, I think. You know? They took a picture of me last night at L Bryant Lake Bowl. All you could see were the... You could, all you could see were the hips and the feet. And I'm wearing glasses from the 80s here, you know? <laughs> Couldn't even see my damn face. Yeah, so you guys married to the Lutheran, and um, he was concerned about staying in Minnesota, so we, we negotiated that I would be allowed to leave when I wanted to, <laughs> to go home to see the cousins outside of Boston, right? So I'm gonna tell you, I live south of the Minnesota River, just a block away from the baboon cage at the Minnesota Zoo. So I got 11 minutes to get to Delta. So I got a lot of miles there, and TSA and I have a great relationship. Get the bitch through, she's going. Get her out of here. Get her out of here. And I go home, and I have a great time, and then I get recharged, I come back, and I'm in this marriage. And here's the thing, we have two great kids. We have an awesome gay child who went to Hamlin and loves it, and she's a brainiac. And my kids left home at 18. You know why? Because I'm a mean mom. <laughs> I'm mean. My Lutheran doesn't make decisions for two weeks. Parenting involves day-to-day -day consideration, you know? Yeah, you gotta eat your vegetables. Well, Dad will let us know in two weeks. <laughs> Mama says, eat them now. You just had chocolate syrup for breakfast. That's your treat for the day. The rest of the day is vegetables. And like my father before me, he's still alive. He's not dead. He's still commenting on things. Um, God, I mean, let me digress. How would you know? We just met. You don't know if I'm doing my set or what, but I am. Here's the thing. My dad's 83. He's not that much older than I am, really. And he walks three to six miles a day. And he's in the Twin Cities. That's how I first got here. Just what you want to hear at 15. Hey, we're moving to Minnesota. And it was the 70s. And it's like, nobody ever relocated that far unless they wanted to leave their family and move. You know? I thought we were going to be dropped off with Mary Tyler Moore and Rhoda, you know? Great, I love that. I told my sister, we're going to go downtown and throw our hats up in the air. That's the first thing we did when we moved here. <laughs> we lived out in Plymouth, and we took a bus downtown. It was three buses from the Ridgedale Mall, you know? And I, we got downtown. We took a couple of our friends with us. They'd never been on a bus. It was fabulous. First of all, back in the olden days in Minnesota, nobody made a decision at all. It was hell. <laughs> but I had fun with it. I just told my friends, you're getting on the bus, we're going. And we go downtown, to throw our hats up, these kids didn't even know who Mary Tyler Moore was. I think they went to bed at six o'clock. We educated those people. I'm still best friends with them today, yeah. It's fun to take them back to Boston and show them what it's like when people make decisions. They go into Dunkin' Donuts to friggin' fight it out, you know? I have sworn six times in this set. Thank you. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm done now. Because at my house, when you swear, 25 bucks in the swear jar. Yeah, I get a lot of miles on Delta that way. Yeah, I set my Lutheran up with a Home Depot project, you know? <laughs> Little DIY, and I go, honey, you need that new sander. <laughs> yeah, and the language goes, you know? I, I have to say, we have two awesome kids, like I said, and um, our son went to um, Boston College. Both kids got scholarships, take after their dad. I am an A- minus in gym class. <laughs> my Lutheran is a Southwest High School Quiz Bowl Prodigy, and it started at sixth grade. And the reason I know so many intimate details about that is when I got married to my Lutheran, my mother-in-law had a station wagon full of trophies from Quiz Bowl and pictures from KSDP of the Quiz Bowl champ, you know? I mean, he first he's this high, then he's this high. You know, you can get a job in Minnesota if you were a Quiz Bowl champ. That's really all you need. 
Because if anybody even flipping remembers it, I said, why don't you just be really old school, honey? You've already sent your stuff in for the new job. Why don't you just show up, find the gatekeeper, and give her a couple trophies, and maybe we'll get in. <laughs> you know, let's just do that. That would be great. But the children are very smart, and this is what happened. When they were like six and five, I thought I would start doing the parenting my parents did, because you want to prepare youth to leave the home. And I was always coached at six or seven, or around that five to seven age group, that you wanted to start saving your money to leave home. This is what my parents said. Now, mind you, my parents were 16 and 19 when I was born. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think there was a shotgun wedding without a gun because it was Massachusetts, and back in those days, you know, guns still were not discussed, you know, except the mafia. <laughs> so, that's a new twist on that joke. Thanks for the eyeball contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, let me talk, I want to talk about that. It just kind of ties in with the name. We'll go back to the kids in just a minute. But here's the deal. Um, my parents were very young. Uh, Mom, 16, Dad, 19. He was an Ivy League football intellectual prodigy kind of a person. And he was a lifeguard that summer outside of Boston. True story, on the Hunt Beach. My mom, cheerleader, Melrose High School, Labor Day weekend, the cheerleaders are going crazy down there in the Hunt Beach. Yeah, Labor Day weekend. Nine months later, I ruined prom for her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And she likes to tell the story about how they named me. For two weeks, back in the olden times, women got a vacation when they had a baby. They went in there for two weeks. My mom said it was the most fun she ever had. Hung out with the nurses, told dirty jokes, went out and smoked cigarettes after the birth. It was wonderful. I like to think she had a bottle of Jack Daniels there, too, you know? <laughs> And what was funny was, she said that my dad and her could not come up with a name. That for two weeks plus, I was called, very simply, the baby. <laughs> the baby. I'll tell you something. Relatives in our family, on both sides, all sides, to this day, as ancient as I am, when I walk in there, my cousins still go, hey, the baby's coming. <laughs> the baby, it's the baby. <laughs> wow. Weird glasses on that baby. <laughs> Why couldn't they name me? My mom wanted to name me, and both my parents were stubborn. And this is a great example of their stubbornness. Mom, her whole pregnancy and beyond until she passed, loved, loved Sarah Lee Poundcake. Loved it. She wanted to name me Sarah Lee Pickering. <laughs> Sarah Lee. Looks like somebody that would be in a little house on the prairie dress with a bonnet, you know, in my mind. My dad's opposition to that was that, oh my God, Jerry, she's gonna be a fat kid. We can't, we can't call her Sarah Lee. She'll take after, you know, it'll be horrible. To this day, he says to me, I was fat shaming you in the womb. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize. And I was a chubby little devil. I really was as a kid because I love to eat food. There was nothing wrong with that. And I ate a lot of Sarah Lee pound cake, guys. But my middle name is Lee, Karen Lee Pickering. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to that, you guys. Oh my God. But back to our kids. So, you know, and my parents, uh, my dad is a commissioned salesperson, um, an electrical engineer that really was a geek. And he decided that making money and helping customers was cool. When he first got to Minnesota, Totino's, and Fridley was a big customer of his, and he would take me with him. We, we had four kids by now, and he would take me with him on sales calls because something would break, and he would have to jump into the vat of sauce with waiters, and he would jokingly say, my oldest daughter knows how to swim well, too. I'm bringing her with, and I would get to go around in the sauce with the waiters on looking for some broken part and hanging out with my dad and every once in a while, we'd find what broke, you know, and I have to say, they were very sanitary boots, and a lot of pizza was served after that, but it was, <laughs> it was good. Oh, my God. And so, so anyways, he, would, he wanted to instill in us a work habit, right? So my kids learned how to sell lemonade at five. That was my thing. I'd put the little tykes table at the end of the driveway. I'd get them involved in the house. We'd make the lemonade giant vats of lemonade, because I didn't want those kids back in the house till five, you know? <laughs> hey, I'm old school, you go out, 
you stay out till the street lights come on. You know, not at five, but you know what I'm saying, yeah. So we'd set him up at the end of the driveway. Unbeknownst to me, my husband was in opposition to this, and he had a whiteboard that he wrote things on in the front. And I never kind of checked it out. I just thought it said the price and all that. It said the price, and it said, please buy so my mother can leave. <laughs> she needs plane tickets home. I mean, every day was something different. And those kids sold, man, 200 bucks one day, you know? I mean, and they were ready to leave home. They both became really big savers, you know? And so they, um, our daughter picked Hamlin because it was amazing and wonderfully creative, and she likes under 10,000 people on campus. And I believe that my son went to Boston thinking I would be upset about it. And I wasn't. I was like, oh, you're near my cousins and my aunts. I'm going to come out there quite a bit. You don't have to visit me. I'll just be having fun. I'll say that I'm coming to visit you. I'll drop over to campus, visit other people. It'll be great, you know. But my kids are the reason I'm back in comedy. I hadn't planned on coming back. I mean, I was doing it way back when in the 80s and early 90s, and all of a sudden I had to get sober, <laughs> and I left for a long time. And then when I turned 50, my amazing stepmom, who's very artsy and craftsy, put together a scrapbook of my life, and in it were clippings of ancient shows, Dudley Riggs, What's So Funny About Being Female, Star Tribune articles that trashed the opening act, Karen Pickering, because she was neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it was true that night. I, I, I had my period and I hadn't eaten all day, man. I was the opening act. <laughs> and also they wanted me to wear dress shoes with my dress and I can't wear high heels. And I don't know who in the show wanted that, but that's what I thought. I was trying to please the other women because I'm one. I had for a long time. I thought I had to please people. Well, screw that, you know. Be who you are. But back to the, the scrapbook. It was amazing. Now I didn't know that my kids had seen that scrapbook before I did. I hadn't told them too much about comedy. They just thought I went to one open mic and quit. <laughs> they didn't know I'd done radio and comedy for 11 years. You know, I did more radio though. Anyways, that's not important to the joke. So they truly, one night, with my Lutheran, called a family meeting at 5 o'clock on a Sunday. And I was like, OK, somebody's dying. What's going on? I went, and they asked me to keep my mouth shut. And they said, both kids were like, if you go back to comedy, we promise we'll go back and focus on school and go to college. And my God, it worked. I said, I'll go out tomorrow night. And I tracked down Kristen Anderson Anderson, a comic who's really amazing and a headliner in the cities. And I said, hey, I know you haven't heard from me, but Facebook is allowing us to find friends from the past. Let's get together, have a cup of coffee. What do you say? She says, yeah, you're on, sister. So you guys are stuck with me. I love this crap. So thank you. It, it's been an interesting ride. And um, I'm not through talking about my kids yet, because this is amazing. I am the mean parent, and it's true. My Lutheran will decide two weeks later. But here's how mean I was. I got them the same gift for graduation. They're a year apart. You want to you know, do it right. And I got them things. OK, first of all, I got them each a cursive handwriting book <laughs> and lined paper, pens, post-its, envelopes things they'd forgotten about, never seen before. <laughs> and I said, when the apocalypse comes, it will come. We will not be able to use social media, let alone our phones and everything else that we've been using electronically. You're going to need to communicate. Here's how. You're going to write letters, notes, and all those crazy owls that are unemployed from the Harry Potter movies. We're going to carry the communication around the world. They thought I'd gone back to smoking dope. <laughs> but they thought it was great. And I said, your other gift that I'm giving you is very important. They're better than Jesus had. And he got to see the world in a pair of sandals. And you will, too. Here's your Birkenstock, Arizona Habanas. <laughs> no Buick LeSabre for you, kids. You're going to have Birkenstocks. Right now, I would gladly give a daughter a car. 
for a buck because she's 25 and not driving. And she's, she's promised me she'll get her license. Because I'm an e if, she, if you call me and say you need groceries and you live in Uptown, I will, I will drive 20 miles from my house to yours just to see you and take you to the grocery store. And then I leave you on the side of the street at your apartment to carry them in yourself. <laughs> I want, they're still my kids, they gotta learn, you know? <laughs> but when they moved out, man, the romance came back in the house, you know what I'm saying? It was date night every night. I even did something I've never done in my whole marriage. I cleaned the house thoroughly! <laughs> it was so fun! I used Q-tips on the grout. I went crazy. They were gone, you know? Yeah, it helped me with the grief. You kind of miss the little devils, you know? Anyways, before I go, I have to tell you, my Lutheran was so concerned about staying in Minnesota. We, we tried to get him out to the East Coast. We had awesome jobs outside the D.C. area, 1999 to 2000. And this is what happened. He, like, got on Interstate 95 outside of D.C. We're in the car, I'll never forget it. I'm in the passenger side. The two children strapped in safely with their 15 little belts and their infant carriers, you know? And I'm throwing the goldfish crackers in the back seat, giving them a snack. I don't do fast food. Take a, that's fast food. Here's your fish, eat them. It builds character and they can catch that stuff and it also works on their small motor skills. You know, catch that goldfish, baby. You got it, you got it. And I should have picked up at that point in time that my little son, who was like almost three, was not picking on the gold. He couldn't catch the goldfish. It took me two more years to realize he needed glasses. Because that's the one idiot thing I didn't realize. Oh, maybe the kids get my eyes, you know, or his father's. Never forget uh, my dad saying to us, oh, I digress before I go. Um, again, my, my dad did not want to have our th me and my two sisters slaves to our hormones. So he said we each had to pick a sport. He wasn't going to have whiny, snivelly witches around the house. Yeah. He said, I've picked a sport out for each one of you. Let me know what you think. And he throws a basketball at me. I had to be like third grade. And I catch it. And he says, that's for you, because that's a ball big enough for you to see. <laughs> yeah. OK, I'm sorry. That was too mean, wasn't it? <laughs> but it was funny. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to finish that bit. But that's OK. How would you know? <laughs> Some of you I've barely met. Wait, I can do this one bit before I go. Oh, come on, you crazy clock. There we go. OK. My Lutheran was really concerned because we're out there outside of DC. And he's looking. He's looking in the car, terrified. We're at, like stopped on Interstate 95. And he looks over at me and says, I can't do this. I'm like, drive? He says, I'm not staying here. This place, look at the highway. It's got eight lanes of traffic going in one direction. And I looked at him and I said, that's the way God meant highways to be, honey. It's safe. It's OK. No, no, we have to move back to Minnesota. The whole thing, leaving. He ended up in Hazleton because of the Xanax addiction. That's all I can tell you. It was crazy. It was crazy. You know, it was just crazy. So we're back here. And he was concerned about me. He wanted me to like you guys the way he did and understand it. You know, he wanted me to fall in love with you. So you know where he took me? To your state fair. Yeah, because something happens to you guys at the fair. I wish it happened to you all year long like this. Honest to God. You're so, you're like crazy. And, and like you wear clothes that are fun and amazing. Like you get rid of the corporate crap and your tight jeans and you wear like um, cut off yoga pants, <laughs> Crocs, and tube tops. And that's just the, you know, the guys. And where do you dump your kids? I never see you with your own children. They're with crazy nannies over on the Midway. And you guys eat everything and drink everything there. You know, you're not like picky and watching your weight like you are when you're going over to the Planet Fitness Witness, you know, and stuff like that. It's just amazing what you do. And, I, and then, like, you'll like start publicly vomiting without conscience right into those baskets, and then you go eat again. 
And I'm thinking, this is just like my family outside of Fenway Park. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I love the fair. God, I call in sick. Finally, my boss said, I know you're going to call in sick for the fair. Just pick four days this year, for God's sake, so the rest of us can go. I just love it out there. My favorite experience was actually last year when we finally got back to, the, I'm, I'm, I'm living with germaphobes, by the way. Um, so we, we were wearing a mask just before COVID in case we needed to. Yeah, and that's my, my husband and the kids. Yeah, they, when I went back to work, I was the only one in the family working with customers. They put me in the backyard with, in a tent for two weeks till I realized that COVID didn't jump from the top of my hair into the house. No lie, because they may be quiz bowl champions people, but you know. Okay, my favorite part of the state fair last year, this is what happened. In front of me, I was thinking of leaving. My Lutheran said, do you wanna go? And I said, this lady's fascinating. I'd been watching this little old lady whose name was Miriam, because she had a T-shirt on the back so her family could find her. She had a walker with like three cup holders, each with a beer. For her, she wasn't sharing. And I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, you are really moving fast. Are you okay? Is there an emergency? I don't know you, who are you? And I said, uh, Karen, I'm a transplant and I'm fascinated with your behavior. You look like you're 90, 92. I'm heading over to Politician's Row there, near KSTP and all the idiots. And I said, oh, which idiot are you going to see? She said, well, Trump's not here. Amy Klobuchar will do. <laughs> I wanted to see what this woman was doing. I wanted to see, and, you know, so I follow her over. We're like three blocks away, and she's tanking, she's drinking, that one's done. She's drinking this one. That walker was going better than my car, and I don't drink anymore, you know? She's going straight. She goes over to the gathering around Amy Klobuchar, and she goes, she turns to me and says, now I will refer to her as Senator Klobuchar. <laughs> she raises her hand with a drink in it. She is called on. Ma'am in the back with the walker and the beer. Senator Klobuchar, I have one question for you. Why that haircut? <laughs> for God's sake, you look like Helmut Hillary. Please, do something better. You're better. Without missing a beat, Senator Klobuchar responds, I want to thank you for your concern, and I will seriously take that into consideration. <laughs> I love them both. Thank you guys so much. I'm Karen Pickering.